We have a whole field of beautiful hemp plants, and these hemp plants create what is known as cannabinoids. There are over 100 cannabinoids that can be found within the cannabis plant. Cannabinoids can be found in other plants. Uh, they're found in cacao, so that's why when we eat dark chocolate, we feel great. But cannabis is definitely the plant that can produce the highest levels of cannabinoids. There are cannabinoids that I'm sure you are familiar with, such as THC, CBD, and some lesser known ones like CBG and CBN. These are all acronyms. THC stands for tetrahydrocannabinol, uh, CBD for cannabidiol, uh, but these are all compounds that are found within the plants and our bodies actually interact with these compounds. Why are we having these reactions to them? It's all because of this system called the endocannabinoid system. The endocannabinoid system, it's a homeostasis controlling system, uh, basically is our physiology and how we keep ourselves in balance. We have a variety of endocannabinoid receptors, mostly CB1 and CB2, and they're located throughout the body. Uh, CB1 receptors are mostly in the central nervous system and parts of the brain. Uh, CB2 receptors are mostly in the peripheral part of the body and the skeletal system and the GI tract and the spleen and the testes and the ovaries, and they control a number of other uh, processes. We do make our own endocannabinoids that play a role in the things like you know, mood and appetite and emotion and uh, digestion and inflammation and immunity, but we could also tune up some of that homeostasis if we're lacking it by use of phytocannabinoids, phyto meaning uh, plant. Uh, so we have plant-based cannabinoids, which we all know as marijuana. Where do all the cannabinoids come from? CBG or cannabigerol, CBGA in its form when it's in the plant as an acid is what we know as the mother cannabinoid. All the cannabinoids come from CBG. And over time, the plant has a gene that converts those cannabinoids, the CBG, into both THC and CBD. In our process, we focus on using the buds, which most of the cannabinoids are within the flower of the plant, and we also use the leaves. But the sticks and stems aren't really useful for extracting cannabinoids. In order for us to extract CBD from the plants, we have to first dry the plants. We actually hand harvest every single plant and then we hang dry them in our barns and it takes about 10 days to two weeks for them to dry down, slowly cure those cannabinoids because cannabinoids and terpenes are highly volatile, meaning when they're mixed up or there's heat applied to them, they will dissipate. In order to extract the cannabinoids, there are a lot of different ways of extraction depending on what the finished product is. We use what is called ethanol extraction we basically start first with a wash. We load a bag of ground hemp into a centrifuge and that's gonna rinse all the hemp leaves in ethanol. And that ethanol will extract the CBD, other cannabinoids, as well as the terpenes, and then it goes into what's called a rotovap. And a rotovap is a slowly circulating vessel over very, very low heat, and that heat slowly evaporates off the ethanol, which then condenses onto the coils, and what's left at the end is just the oil. The difference between a marijuana plant and a hemp plant is the level of THC found in that plant. An industrial hemp plant is identified as a plant that produces less than 0.3% THC. A normal marijuana plant has about 15 to 20 percent THC in it and sometimes these days you're seeing them up as high as 25 to 30 percent. The THC is the cannabinoid found in the cannabis plant responsible for giving you that high effect. As humans we use cannabis recreationally but it can also be used medicinally. Because our plants are at less than 0.3 percent you won't necessarily get that high feeling However, the THC that's in there is extremely important for what's known as the entourage effect. The plant itself has about 500 compounds in it, a couple hundred cannabinoids, and there's also a couple hundred terpenes. It takes all of those, the whole goodness of the plant, to have a, a maximal uh, benefit. 
terpenes are the smells that we get from plants. Lavender, for example, the terpene that's responsible for the smell of lavender is called linalool. And linalool is found in cannabis. So is something called myrcene, which is found in mangoes, also found in cannabis. So you're looking for terpenes uh, to give you a full spectrum oil as well as cannabinoids. And the most important, uh, I think, for a full spectrum oil is the THC that's in there. So CBD, just like THC, comes from the flowers, the buds of the plant. And CBD is mainly used for the following four things. Anxiety, sleep, pain, and inflammation. CBG, just like CBD, can be found right in the plant. We actually have varieties of hemp that are CBG dominant. From our experience with CBG, it gives energy, mental clarity. CBN is different than CBD and CBG because it doesn't, there isn't a CBN dominant plant. CBN is actually degraded THC. THC oxidizes and converts into CBN. And so if you've ever smoked old weed and you felt tired after, it's probably because the THC has converted into CBN and CBN has sedating effects. So it makes you more sleepy. Nothing's 100%. There's no chance of overdose using uh, cannabinoids. The part of the brain that controls respiration can be impeded by opioids and cause overdose and death. There's no cannabinoid receptors in that part of the brain. There's opioid receptors in that part of the brain. Do cannabinoids work for everyone? I would say the response rate is between 80 and 90 percent when I certify patients. It's not a lifetime certification. In New York, it's a year at a time, and I'd say 80 percent of patients recertify. The response is pretty overwhelmingly positive. If you're thinking about trying out cannabinoid therapies, the first thing I would recommend is reaching out to your doctor because there are different interactions with different medications that you should be aware of, and hopefully your doctor can help you through that. Everyone's systems respond differently to cannabinoids in general. What we recommend is starting low and slow. It takes about a week to start noticing any kind of difference, and we generally recommend taking CBD every single day for a month before making a judgment as to whether or not it works for you. It's not an instant remedy. You're not gonna all of a sudden feel like on top of the world after a day of taking it. It takes commitment and it takes routine, and it's something that you have to make sure fits into your life.